donuts to work for everybody. I just end up coming in and taking them all day long. So today is a little bit of a different Saturday. Uh, I actually had given myself the day off as a little bit of a gift, but there literally is nothing else to do. So I decided that my time was better spent coming in and finding ways to help some people out. I picked up one client. I probably will still leave a little bit early, so that I can at least still fulfill part of that gift to myself. But um, it's a little bit different. So I will, however, answer some questions. you like coming to work? Would you like to have your own bed and not have to share? It is time to queue it up. All right, let's get into these questions. I'm looking for a new product line to use that has styling aids that complements Olaplex well. Things I'm hoping for are great smell, clean, high quality ingredients, simple branding. So we use Olaplex. I also have a mix of other products from um, Davines, a company called Electric. We have Evo. And I think that the real key here though is that what ties all of the brands that you choose to represent together is you. So whether the bottles themselves look the same or not, I think that it's, it's your curated feel and it's your uh, endorsement that brings everything together. Now, from a purely Aesthetic standpoint, what I have that probably pairs the best with the look of Olaplex is probably Electric uh, of London and Evo from Australia. What do you think of buying a book of clients or a client list from a stylist getting out of the industry? I know other types of businesses definitely do that, but I don't know if it's a good idea in our industry. Any thoughts? So I actually think that this is a terrible idea, to be honest. I just don't think that there's going to be uh, any value that comes out of purchasing that guest list. Now, if you were to work with the stylist ahead of time and say that you, how can I phrase it? If you wanted to pay that stylist for their endorsement of you, and as they're retiring, they say, you know, uh, I'm getting out of the industry, but I would love for you to go see my friend, Ben, he does great work over at Hairloft. There could be something there, but I really don't like the feel of it. Uh, and, and I know that in other industries, we can certainly buy a contact list and things like that, but I actually think that some of that has become illegal as well. So this to me is just like, don't get into it at all. Hmm. I've been at my salon for six years and I felt it was time to rent a chair. Granted my client base is so-so, I'll be in a chair in two weeks. I'm very worried and my boss discourages me and has been for a few years. Any words or advice? Look, this is gonna be a bigger undertaking than you think. It's not just going out and learning how to continue to become a better hairstylist and do better hair and everything. 
you have to also educate yourself on what it takes to be a good business manager even if that means that it's only a business of one you still need to be able to manage it from your inventory to your cash flow all of those are things are the things that are going to make or break you being a success renting a space and being in business for yourself all that being said you can totally do it okay it is possible and it is proven that it that you can be a solo single entity now I want you to think though about where your previous boss's perspective is coming from of course they want to discourage you unfortunately they probably want to keep you and they probably want to keep the rest of the team there so that they don't also follow suit in your situation and so you really got to take it with a grain of salt or just block that noise out completely because it really isn't going to add any value to you going forward in your next endeavor so you can do this but you have to get the education on the business side of things especially as you said like your business is so so that's where I would be a little a little nervous but you can do this I've been out of school almost four years and I've worked at the usual chain haircutting places in my area my average cutting time for a men's cut is about 35 minutes they don't like how long it's taking me but I like the pace that I'm working at I guess I'm wondering if there's anything else that I can do to either speed up I'm just looking to get my place in this stylist world so I think that this is a great question and I think that it actually comes down to the fact that the experience that those chain places are trying to provide may not be the type of experience that you're trying to provide 35 minutes is a very reasonable amount of time for a haircut service in our salon even for men's cuts we still book 45 minutes to an hour now a chain price of like $12 for a 12 minute haircut versus you know 60 to 75 dollars for a 45 minute to an hour haircut you know there there is a difference there for sure and so if you're comfortable working at a 35 minute pace and you're enjoying it and you're doing top quality work it might just mean that you need to find a different place to provide that service and as a result hopefully have a higher price tag than what you were charging at the chain places as well I don't feel that I'm very good at taking pictures of my clients hair are there any tips or tricks or people to follow that you would recommend in order to learn more absolutely I think that uh, Andrew does hair is the best person to follow in terms of understanding photography when it comes to hair his information is the best so he should be the one that you follow for this type of information to me natural lighting is always good working with the client and trying to make them loosen up and like not feel like so stiff or like awkward also another key and using the best camera that you can these are good they're really good and they are great for a cell phone but it doesn't even compare to being able to get like a real camera or something that is going to nail that image so use the best camera that you have use the best lighting that you have but if you can afford to invest in getting a better camera I would highly recommend it because building your business through the photography and the content that you're creating you will get the money back if you invest in something nice what has been the most effective way of advertising and attracting ideal clients content creation it all comes down to content creation so you putting out what you want to get back when we put out a massive ton of images and videos with blonding we in turn then get a lot of clients coming in for blonding and so if you're just getting started you might be saying well I don't have any content and I don't have clients to get content well get friends get models have people come in that trust you create photos create videos around it and start putting it up online now here's the thing content is a slow game just because you post it does not mean that somebody's gonna come in today but you're continually telling the story of the business and of the things that you do within the business and then that will drive people to you but it's not going to be it's not going to be instant you know in terms of instant things sending it out an email to people that haven't been in in a while that's always a good one um, honestly you could pick up the phone and call 
if you feel like you had that type of relationship with them in the past, I think that that's a great way to go about doing it. Doing some sort of cross promotion. I don't know the area that you're in, but one of the things that we often do is if a new apartment building opens up, we'll do a little gift for people that move into the building, $25 to have them come in. So those are some ideas, but honestly, content and telling your story, I think is the best if you're willing to invest in the long term and not looking for a short term solution. No, this is fine. This is fine. Come on. You want to answer this one? Okay, one more. One more. After leaving my last salon job, I'm in search of a new salon. I'm looking into multiple salons to try to find the right home for me. How do I go about applying and interviewing at multiple places and letting them know that I'm looking at multiple places? Going to multiple places is a great idea because you want to get different perspectives and every place is unique and it's going to offer you different things. And based on that, you want to pick and choose the environment that you're going to work in, right? Because you don't want to be here for a week, there for two weeks and just jumping around. I also don't think that you need to let people know that you are interviewing multiple people. If I was interviewing multiple people, I don't necessarily tell everybody, hey, I have other candidates coming in for this job. And so I think that it's fair for you to just keep it to yourself, weigh your options. If you feel like somebody offers you a position before you've made a decision, it's completely fair to say, you know what, I have an interview with one other place that I'd really like to talk to and go from there. And guess what? If the first place doesn't understand that and they get upset, it's probably not the place that you wanted to work at anyway. So that was this week's questions. I'm going to take these dogs for a walk and get out of here.